Lenten blessings to each of you. My name is Jade, the current interim pastor at Prince of Peace. We are so glad that you are able to join our midweek Lenten online worship. For these five Wednesdays, including today, we are going to hear personal stories that will enrich not only our personal life but also communal life together. Olaf Hellman's story makes evident how we, as the people of faith, can make it through together during a challenging time. Cindy Kingsbury's story is a great example of being a blessing to many while having been blessed by God. Ellie's this story invites us to step out of our comfort zone to repent and be the change for the sake. Of our lives together, Janet Baggage's story invites us to enter her life that has been accompanied by the kind of hope that only God could offer. And the last Wednesday, we are going to hear Reverend M. Barton's story that shows us what seizing God's moment is like. Let us give thanks to each one of them. For their faith stories and the good news they proclaim. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please sing along the beautiful Holding Evening Prayer by following our song leaders Barbara and Cindy. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The, the light, light no, no darkness, darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who see in creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you, God of day. God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, of the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts all chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens bless. Your light, mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ, to lights our way, loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you all, and also with you. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your
come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come. You that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This passage from Matthew speaks to something deep inside me. I'm not a biblical scholar by any means, but something has always been in my heart that says, I need to help people. I had a fairly easy childhood. My mom was raised in a Catholic orphanage where as a left-handed bedwetter, she suffered a great deal of abuse. My father was raised as a Christian scientist. So I think they kind of bagged the whole religion thing as far as a constant discipline in our household. But we always said grace at meals. 
My mother taught us how to pray, including the Lord's Prayer. And my dad was part of a Christian breakfast group until the day he died. I still pray the prayers my mom taught me, and I pray for all in need. But I never knew I could pray for myself. That would be selfish. My mom was the oldest of five children, and as I grew up, I watched her help them in so many ways. One of my aunts, who also had five children, lived in poverty, and my mom was always helping them. She set an excellent example of helping those in need. I could bring my troubled friends to my mom, and she would help them. But my folks did not take us to church. However, my twin sister, Sandy, who was always the leader between the two of us, decided that we were going to walk to Sunday school every Sunday at Woodway Reformed Church, where we attended from the age of five through most of high school. I had a boyfriend that stole the sound equipment from my church. I reported him, but I never went back as I felt so guilty about the whole thing. A girlfriend suggested I sing in her choir at her church, and before I knew it, I was baptized and confirmed a Lutheran. I took this completely for granted. I was raised in Edmonds in the 50s and 60s. The only immigrants around were Scandinavian. We did not live in the melting pot of races or nationalities or religions as we do now. Didn't everyone believe in God? It just wasn't questioned. Another decision made by my sister was to become a campfire girl because she liked mints better than cookies. The campfire law was worship God, seek beauty, give service and knowledge, pursue, be trustworthy ever in all that you do. Hold fast unto health and your work glorify and you will be happy in the law of campfire. So the Christian ethic of being of service to others has been a part of my life as long as I can remember. I can't recall ever hearing this chapter of Matthew until we sang the words in the cantata here at Prince of Peace. But I know that being there for other people is something I always wanted to do. I was always the friend to whoever didn't have one. In college, I majored and graduated in social work. After my folks got divorced from uh, my first year of college, I entered a period of time of simply being in survival mode. I did not pray for myself. I just dug in and did what I needed to do. I transferred to the UW, got a job full time, put myself through college. Shortly after graduating, I married right here at Prince of Peace in 1975 and had two boys, Ryan and Eric, who were baptized here and went to Sunday school. All through my 22 years of marriage, I was not thinking of doing what Jesus calls us to do in Matthew. My husband liked to spend much more money than we could ever afford. So besides raising children, I had to work full time. So serving others other than myself and my family was the furthest from my mind. Again, I don't remember ever praying for guidance. I just did what I needed to do. The only thing I never gave up was going to church and listening to the word of God. I love church, always have, and love being among folks just like you, who are generous and kind and ethical. In spite of my lack of prayers for myself, God was in my life creating what seemed like miraculous coincidences that pulled me through the dark times over and over again. I'm going to give you a few of actually many examples of this. When my son Eric was on an overnight conference for school and decided he didn't want to live anymore, God was there. Eric decided to tell his teacher who called 911. I was called, I called my sister, God was there. She was supposed to meet with some friends of hers, a lesbian couple. When she called to cancel because Eric was in the hospital, they told her that a large percentage of teen suicide is due to the teen questioning their sexuality. Do you think he's gay, they asked? We have two pastors at UCC who are a gay couple, and one of them is a therapist who specializes in working with teens. I asked Eric, he said yes. We called the therapist, 
And as many of you know, he was now an extremely popular, successful man. Oh, yes, God was there. And I thank him every day. When I divorced, I had nothing to my name but my car. I don't think I ever thought to pray to God to help me. Oh, but he did. He gave me Kay and Lesvia, who let me live in their house while they were snowbirding in Palm Springs. He sent me Laura Audio, who fixed up a beautiful master bedroom for me in her condo, where I lived for seven months rent-free. When I scraped enough money together to buy a condo, Karen helped me move. She actually did most of it. Les, Via, and Karen put up a fireplace mantle for me, and Jeannie and Larry came and helped with my disposal and one of the bathrooms. Later, I met Gary. To say God put him in my life would be an understatement. Together, we were able to purchase a new condo. We worked hard to get it paid off so we could retire without worrying about our well-being. And he does so much for me that I have time to pursue what God is calling me to do. We had a very difficult cancer scare with Gary a few years back. He needed major surgery, and I honestly didn't know if he would live through it. My sister went to every single doctor appointment and chemo appointment with us so she could take notes and send to his kids. His family and my dear friend Sean, our organist, was with me in the waiting room to pray. Well, you know the result. He is healthy and well, and I am so grateful. In 2012, my dad died. He worked so hard to make sure my sister and I had an inheritance. Shortly after his death, my son Ryan, who was 35 years old at the time, asked for help. He confessed that for the last 13 years, he was a cocaine addict and alcoholic. I don't think I ever cried so much in my entire life, and I felt so alone. I don't know if I prayed. I know that as usual, I went into action, calling my therapist, calling rehab centers, but I prayed for Ryan and God answered my prayers. I had my dad's inheritance. I could put Ryan through treatment. 10 years later, Ryan is still clean and sober. I was able to provide for him so he could work part-time and attend meetings. I could not have done this without that inheritance. I thank God for giving me a dad that cared enough to save aside some money for me. He certainly did not have to. Today, my beautiful, clean, and sober son is the proud father of my wonderful granddaughter. Once I retired at 65, thanks to careful planning, and again, my inheritance, I was finally able to fully listen to the teaching of Jesus through the verse of Matthew. I am no longer in survival mode, but in living mode. I'm able to provide warmth and comfort to people all over the world with my quilts that I send to Lutheran World Relief. And I don't do this alone. Our quilting group here at Prince of Peace is working hard as are hundreds of men and women across the United States. I am so proud to be a part of such a wonderful group as Lutheran World Relief. I babysit my granddaughter three days a week and I am able to pass on the teachings of Jesus to her. She is not afraid to tell you that she is a child of God. We even had to baptize her dolls so they could be children of God's as well. And I help clothe those in need by volunteering at the Assistance League of Everett, where, among other philanthropic endeavors, we provide 5,000 needy kids in Snohomish County every year with three brand new outfits, a winter coat, shoes, socks, underwear, hat, scarf, gloves, a hoodie, and a hygiene kit. Not long ago, I found out that I have a very rare genetic condition that can cause blindness and heart disease. It is so rare that once I got the diagnosis, all my doctors had to do a lot of research as they never heard of it. We were in North Dakota 
visiting Gary's daughter's family when I showed what I thought was a rash to our son-in-law, a dermatologist. He diagnosed it immediately, performed a biopsy to confirm, and performed an EKG to make sure I wasn't in any immediate danger. Isn't God's timing and plan something else? My ophthalmologist and my cardiologist, after an extensive eye exam and a treadmill test that really almost did kill me, have both announced that I am fine. After announcing to my quilting group that the treadmill test showed that I have a good heart, they all responded, well, Cindy, we know you do. I'm so blessed that people can see the side of me now. I do pray for myself now that I can see I am clearly an instrument of God's. I inherited another thing from my dad, a benign tremor. My head and my hands at times can really start shaking. I am on medication that controls it most of the time. But I pray it won't affect my being able to sing and that it won't affect my ability to sew and to volunteer that I can continue to be a blessing. I was pondering long, not long ago that I am now happy and at peace. And I know it's because that calling to be of help to others has finally come to fruition. I have been a member of Prince of Peace for 47 years and I am so grateful. As a group, we have fed the poor, housed the homeless in the basement and parking lot, and donated funds to many groups supporting the poor. I pray that we continue to honor God and follow in Christ's footsteps for many years to come. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, so highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus. The Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore.
Merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding, and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now you are invited to speak the Lord's prayer in whatever language. Or translation speaks to you, or that the Spirit has a place in your heart. We say together, "Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil." For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory forever and ever, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.